What's up guys, it's Caleb here, back with another video. And this video is gonna be on the CompTIA A Plus uh, Core 1 exam, um, which is also known as the 220-1011, um, and formerly known as the 220-1001. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it. Guys, before we get into the video, I just want to say thanks so much for all the love and support um, since I've been back over the past two weeks. Um, the last two videos got a lot of views and um, have added a lot of subscribers and that sort of thing. And the channel has grown um, in the past few weeks. So thanks so much for that. We are just a few subs away from 100. So if you're watching this video, please subscribe. Let's get to 100 and beyond. Now, let's get into the video. So, the CompTIA A Plus is split into two exams, the Core 1 and the Core 2. Core 1 is focused on hardware and those areas, whilst the Core 2 is focused more on software. This was one of the first certifications that I took, and when I took the exam, I didn't know much about IT, I didn't know too much about computers and that sort of thing. Um, so it's uh, taught me a lot and I was definitely learning a lot of things from scratch when I was studying for this exam. And for me at the time, it took about six months in total to study for the CompTIA A+. This was because I was obviously, like I said, I was quite new to IT and also I was studying on and off. So one month I'll be studying and then I'll take a break for a few months. Uh, for a month or two, then I'll study again, and I kept starting and stopping, which is, uh, it's not the best way to um, study for an exam, um, but at the time I was busy with other things, um, so that's why it took so it took that long. Um, I'd say it, if you're focused on it, no more or less than three months it will take you for that exam, but as always, it varies from person to person, um, so take as much time as you need, and make sure you're ready for that exam. The exam is quite broad, particularly for someone who hasn't worked in IT before. Um, there are quite a few areas to study on. They are definitely essential things that every IT engineer should know or come across at some point in their career. The certification is focused on IT support and help desk support, um, but there are many areas within that that are beneficial to all engineers working in tech. Off the top of my head, this certification covers areas like networking, um, the basics of cloud computing and virtualization, um, troubleshooting, things like uh, hardware components like RAM, um, motherboards, CPUs, and many, many other areas. So in my personal opinion, this is a very good place to start. Um, although the exam is broad, you are getting the foundations that you need um, in any sort of field of technology, whether it's cybersecurity, whether it's cloud computing, whether it's IT support and other areas like that. Now for some details about the exam itself. So the exam has three main question types. It's got multiple choice, it's got drag and drop, and it's got the performance-based questions, or PBQs, as you call them. You'd probably understand what multiple choice and drag and drop questions are, but might wanna know more about the PBQs or the performance-based questions. Simply put, performance-based questions are a lot more interactive and practical. Um, these sort of questions um, sort of show you a real life scenario um, and put you in a position where you've got to figure it out and do things as you would do if you were in a professional environment. You might be a little bit confused about the PBQs, but not to worry, I'll be providing resources that will show you exactly how these PBQs look and even provide a place where you're able to practice um, very similar questions to the PBQs um, Stay tuned in this video, I'll be mentioning them later on. 
The pass mark for this exam is 675 over 900. Um, and when I took the exam, I scored 741 over 900. But as I always say, it doesn't matter if you get 99% or in this case, six, whatever percentage 675 over 900 is, as long as you get over the pass mark, you get the same certification as everyone else. Now for the resources that I used to study for the exam. So the first one I'm gonna recommend is the course by Mike Myers and Steve Nicholson. Um, <clears throat> if you've come across CompTIA before, you know that Mike Myers has been doing courses on CompTIA for many years. Um, he is a great teacher, very easy to understand. And uh, if you go through his course in depth, he covers these areas really, really well. Um, and he highlights and focuses on areas that will come out in the exams also. Um, it, they've just made a new course for the new updates um, and they keep their courses updated as the exams get updated themselves. Um, so yeah, guys, I'll leave a link in the bio as I always do. So check that one out. It's a paid course, um, bear that in mind. I'm not sure the exact price, but click the link and you will see the price there. Um, so yeah. The second resource I'll recommend is the Jason Dion CompTIA A Plus um, Core 1 full course. Um, Jason Dion, Dion Training. He has quite a lot of um, certification training videos and that sort of thing. Um, he's provided a full course for this new sort of exam that's come out um, and he is always great at providing those practice tests um, so yeah check that out i recommend those two especially to be your the main course you use to study um, when i was studying i used um, the mike myers course and then i used dion training practice tests um, so i used a bit of both um, both of those guys are great at what they do and they will provide you with almost everything you need to pass first time. Once again, I'll leave the link in the bio for this as well. Another resource I would say you should use is the CompTIA website itself. Um, they have a list of practice questions on different areas of the exam. Um, so obviously, since that's the CompTIA website, the questions there are going to be very similar to what is going to come out in the exam. Do check that out. Those questions are completely free to use um, and to have a look at. Um, they give the answers there as well. So definitely answer those questions before your exam day. They'll be very helpful for you. And finally, the last resource that I recommend is Google. Guys, if you come across something you don't know, Google it. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that, but it was really helpful when I came across these abbreviations that I had no idea and I didn't know how I didn't know how to find it within the course. I just go to Google, um, research the abbreviation or the, the term, um, get exactly what that is and continue with my study. Um, so it's really helpful. Um, don't feel like you have to go back into the course and study again all the time. Um, you can just go to Google and find out exactly whatever you wh what it is you've come across and um, that, that was really helpful for me when I was studying for this exam. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video has been helpful for everyone who is going to take this exam soon. Um, and even if you're not going to take the exam soon and you're just watching um, for the educational purposes or just to, to enjoy a good video, Thanks for watching as well. Um, guys, keep subscribing, keep supporting, keep liking and sharing. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Almost forgot. Don't forget to follow me on LinkedIn and Instagram. I have a new page up. There's no content on there yet, but it's coming soon. So um, follow on Instagram and LinkedIn and I'll see you in the next video.